What's up, YouTube family? Teal here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight for some more lake breakdowns. I know we've been breaking down Lake Belton, but I'm going to go ahead and start a new one as well. While we're doing Lake Belton, and this time we're going to go do Wright Patman Lake. It's over there by Texarkana, far east Texas, about as you can get uh, as far as going up 30 and just ending there. Wright Patman's just southwest of the Texarkana area. We're going to break it down tonight. We're going to go out. We'll check out the Texas Park and Texas Parks and Wildlife Fishing page. We'll see what's out there. And then we're also going to use Google Earth to see what we can uncover. I know you're going to like it. Let's go. Like we always do with all of our lake breakdowns, let's start on the Texas Park and Wildlife Fishing page and just get some information about Wright Patman Lake. First off, the location is on Sulphur River in Bowie and Cass Counties, 10 miles southwest of Texarkana. Surface area is 18,994 acres, so pretty big lake. Maximum depth is only 40 feet, so not too deep, and it was impounded in 1956. You can see here, and you'll also see on the Google Earth imagery, that the lake does not really fluctuate too much. I mean, it does, but it, not a ton. It's, it's kind of moderate. Fluctuation is four to five feet, and the conservation pool is at 220 feet. Um, just a couple more things to talk about. The aquatic vegetation, the vegetation covers less than 10% of the lake's total surface. I did see some stuff on Google Earth when going through uh, the different years that there is some matted vegetation up on the north eastern side so maybe some frogging opportunities possibly uh, not sure but definitely something to take a look at dominant species include chara american lotus black willow and button brush now when you look at the predominant fish species it seems like when you read this page that this is definitely a white bass uh, type of a fishing lake and bass fishing uh, black bass fishing is actually considered to be good. You can see it down here, but let's talk about some of the stuff here. Predominant fish species, largemouth bass, blue catfish, channel catfish, flathead, crappie, sunfish, and white bass. When we look at the lake records to go out and look and see what the uh, largemouth bass is, pretty good size. Lake records, 12 pounds, 12.28 pounds. It was caught in 2010 on a uh, on a lizard. So definitely something to uh, to go chase after there. See if you can beat that record. All right, so let's keep on moving down just a little bit more before we hop over to Google Earth. I told you that uh, this seemed to be like a white bass lake. And you can see here, white bass are very popular at Wright Patman. High numbers of quality size fish available for harvest. When you read a little bit further down, it finally gets down to talk about largemouth bass right in here. It says largemouth bass are moderately abundant with good numbers of legal size. Uh, so definitely uh, take a look at that. But let's look here. Largemouth bass is good. Blue catfish is excellent. Flathead is good. Crappie is excellent. White bass is excellent. And sunfish is, sun, sun is fair. So there's also some downloadable uh, habitats. So they have put some habitat structures out on this lake. You can see them here on this map. What I've done is I've downloaded these waypoints and added them uh, into our waypoints for simplistic fishing so that you have a complete picture when you put this into your graph. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump over and let's dive into Wright Patman Lake. All right, so when we're talking about the location of Wright Patman Lake, um, you can see here that it's pretty far from Dallas. So we're kind of up in the northeastern corner of Texas. We're out here by Texarkana. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and show you where I'm at. So here's Texarkana. Wright Patman is just southwest of, uh, of Texarkana. So you can see here we've got quite a few points that are out here. Definitely some stuff to take a look at. Now, one thing that was interesting on this lake was that the uh, the best image was actually the most current image that they have. They just put it out there not too long ago. Uh, so before that, the fluctuation wasn't very good. It's kind of hard to find some stuff on this lake. Let's talk about it over here on the left-hand side, how I broke this out. So first off, I've went out and I've used Navionics, which we're going to talk about, to mark different offshore spots on this lake that I think would be high percentage areas to take a look at. So we'll definitely want to go and take a look at that. We'll do that once we get done breaking down everything from the Google Earth side. We also have channels and tracks. Now, these channels and tracks would be uh, different channels or maybe tracks as far as ponds, things like that to take a look at. When we look down in here, I'll just show you a couple different examples here. Here's a really good, uh, really good track that will take you down all the way through the main river channel. 
uh, right there. You've also got some channels here. You've got some pond dams. You've got some ditches. So all kinds of cool stuff that you can really position your boat well on uh, to really be able to catch more fish. We've also got a lot of different cover here. You've got a lot of different laydowns, uh, different types of things on points, channel swings, um, just all kinds of different types of stuff to, uh, to take a look at. I guess channel swing wouldn't necessarily be cover, but it definitely would be a, a type of a structure that would be out there to take a look at. But anyways, lots of good stuff that's out there. We've also got all these different laydowns that are out there. Those are scattered throughout the lake. Definitely if you got all out there in the springtime, you were up there fishing shallow, you've got a lot of good opportunities with laydowns and stuff like that to fish around. A lot of, a lot of cover. Now, rock on this lake is a little bit sparse. Uh, it's here and there. We're going to show it to you guys on what we could find from Google Earth and what we could see uh, with the lake being down a little bit, but I'll show you all of those. And then, of course, we've got the boat ramps as well. You guys have heard me talk about boat ramps. I'm a big believer in fishing boat ramps. Um, I think it's one of the best places to find fish, especially if you're struggling. So here's all the boat ramps for you. The other thing, too, is if you're out on the lake and you have a breakdown or something like that, wouldn't it be cool just to pull up your map and be able to know exactly where all the, the nearest boat ramps are to you, which I know some of our maps do that, but some of them don't do a very good job of it. All right, then we also have the Texas Park and Wildlife Fish Attractors. That's what we talked about earlier. Those are up here by the dam in the deeper part of the lake. And you can see all of those, there's these little trees here. I know those are typically crappie places, right? That's usually where people will go uh, to find crappie, but I'm telling you, those are hot beds for bass as well. The, 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 the crappie are there, the bass like to eat the crappie and they're gonna show up as well. So make sure you check those out. All right, so that is everything for Riot Patman Lake. I'm going to put everything back on. I'm going to take off offshore, and I'm going to move this over. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the dam, and we're going to work our way up. Now, I mentioned before the thing that was pretty cool about this that's going to make it really easy on us is the best image is actually the most current image. So here you can see the lake is, the lake is down. Clearly, it's down you know, four or five feet. I'm not sure why it's down so much. But it's down quite a bit now if i draw it back to say 2019 it's down a little bit um 2022 it's down quite a bit if i move back to say 2013 you can see where the lake actually looks like it's more at full pool so we are actually just going to leave it at 2022 we're going to start at the dam and we're going to work our way up and we're going to see what kind of things we can find here so let's go ahead and get started Let's look at this boat ramp to start with. So I know I talked about boat ramps before, but it's something that you got to check out. You've got a lot of good rock around this boat ramp. There's a lot of potential around this boat ramp. First, you've got the riprap that's just all along the boat ramp or along the dam. But when you get back here, look at how this boat ramp is lined with all this rock. When that water is up, that is a really, really good place to fish. Also, that rock might go all the way out here. So get out here and fish around that rock out here on the edges and on the backside or the end of that boat ramp. You'd be surprised what you can find. One thing that I didn't mark here last time that I definitely should have would be right in here. Uh, this looks like it has some pretty good potential. So it's just right off that rock. It looks like you might have some laydowns and things like that in there. Let's, let's draw it back. Let's pull it back to 2019. And let's see if that ever gets submerged. That looks like it never gets submerged there, but there is some shallow rock right in here that you could definitely fish as well. That must be why I didn't, uh, didn't mark it. But man, when it's down like that, it just looks really juicy. All right, so we're going to keep moving up. We're going to go over here off this first point and really not too much going on off the point. I didn't see any like big rocks or anything like that uh, on this lake. This is kind of your typical... East Texas Lake, you know, kind of muddy bottom, lay down, stuff like that. Not a lot of rock, but when you do find rock, it's usually pretty good. So right here, you've got some pretty good lay downs. Lay downs off of a point, that's a pretty good combination. Now, I'm not sure if this is rock or not. It almost looks like rock. So I went ahead and marked this rock. It might just be that, that mud where it just kind of makes its own little, I don't know, ditches and things like that. But check out this point. I mean, this point's going to be good. Number one, you've got lay downs here. But two, it's a main lake point getting into the deepest part of the lake. So that is definitely going to be a good point to fish around. Now, while you're there, you've also got a Texas Park and Wildlife Fish Attractor site that's just right here. So make sure you go check that out. And then as you're going up the bank line, you can see there's just not a lot going on. I did mark a couple different areas in here, like there's a lay down here that stuck out. I do like how that sets up because it's there's some kind of a creek or something pushing out from back here. And this could be a really good spot for them to set up on. So as they're 
maybe they go out here off these main points in the summer and the winter, and then in the fall and the spring, they come in, and this could be a really good stopping spot for them to stop at. So definitely check out that spot right in there. And as we get in here, we've got this nice little island. I didn't see a lot going on around the island, not a lot to, to mark for you guys, but there is a Texas Park and uh, Wildlife Fish Attractor site here. So you definitely want to look at that one. And then moving on up here, got a few laydowns going off off this point. So uh, again, you know, a lot of these bank lines didn't really show me much, um, but every once in a while I find some pretty good laydowns. And right there you can see a pretty good laydown and right underneath that marks a pretty decent laydown as well. So I'm going to keep moving up the, uh, up the lake here. As you can see, here's where I'm at. There's Sportsman Cove right there. So I'm down here by this boat ramp. Not sure if this one's actually got a name or not. Intake Intake Hill Landing is actually the name of this boat ramp. I like how this sets up. Uh, not necessarily the boat ramp, but this right here. The two points that are outside of this are excellent. You've also got another boat ramp there on the backside. So just right here, you've got a really good funnel here, a really good place for them to set up on. Um, just everything about it is really good. That's definitely going to be a good spot for you to fish. You've also got another boat ramp that's kind of hidden back in here. We get up here by the North Shore Landing, another good good point that comes off. Now, obviously, you're going to have, have uh, cat fishermen and things like that. They're going to be fishing there, so you want to respect them. But if they're not there, these are great places to fish. All this riprap around these boat ramps are high, high, high percentage areas to, uh, to find fish for sure. So go check those out. Now, as we move further up here, this looks like an old parking lot or maybe it's not an old parking lot. It's just their swim area. Uh, looks like they got a actually pretty decent little beach here on their swim area, but just to the uh, to the north side of their swim area, if you look right here, there's a drainage ditch that starts right here, and it comes down, and then it makes a pretty good ditch into the lake right here. Now, if it has been raining anytime soon, or if you've got any type of, of water flow coming into the lake, these are going to be really good areas to look at because there's high high percentage of oxygen there. They'll just, it'll create an area where they like to go and congregate. So check out those ditches. They're not always going to be good, but sometimes they can be really good. And if it's been raining a lot, or if it is raining, definitely go look at these spots. There's another one right here where one of those ditches are. And then as we get back in here, we got just a little creek that comes back. So I went ahead and just marked the channel for you so you know exactly where the channel is. And of course, that kind of changes because of all this mud and soot and stuff, but that get, gets you pretty darn close to where the uh, the creek channel is. All right, so let's pull back a little bit, show you where I'm at. I'm up here in this first little pocket up here. I want to show you guys this right here, and I didn't mark it because I don't see any rock on it, but this would be worthy of going and, and just scanning around. See if they set up on the outside of this stuff, because it almost looks like an old pond dam or something. I wasn't sure what it is and I couldn't really mark it. It might not even be anything. Maybe it's too shallow up here to even fish. But anyways, just see if anything's setting up on the outsides of that. Or maybe if the water's up, see if there's any rock on top of this little hump. Or if the water ever gets up high enough, maybe here, to where some of this debris gets in the water, that could be a good area to look at too. Let's draw this back. See, even when I draw it back and the water's up, it's still pretty shallow, so you're going to have to be pretty careful up there. I'm not sure if this is going to be a good spot or not for you guys or not. It might be too shallow to get the boats up there, but maybe not. All right, so let's go ahead and let's swing up here. We're at Clear Springs Park. There's another boat ramp that's up here. Again, this is some shallow stuff up here, so we got to be beware when you're up here. But up here by this boat ramp, this one doesn't look as good, mainly just a boat ramp. Got a little bit of rock around the fishing uh, dock there, but nothing too spectacular. This area up here, to be honest with you, didn't really catch my eye too much. But the one thing I did notice in here, let me see if I can show you guys. When we draw this back to more of a summertime, now it starts to look a lot better. Uh, everything's a little bit greener. This is also where I started to see, uh, I don't know what area of the lake it was, but I started to see some vegetation where it was actually a little bit matted. So uh, maybe, a, maybe an area to look at, maybe not. Depends on if you like the shallow water fishing. I do, so I would definitely go up here and just check it out at least and see if I could find anything. Now, as you're up here, there's a couple of different things you can look at. One, there's a little channel here that I forgot to mark. So I'll mark that for you guys. But you've got one here too, that kind of goes up and around. So maybe just fishing the openings of these and just seeing things collecting around the openings, even here. This is your main 
channel right here so you can definitely go up there and fish around that main channel you've also got another little sub channel that comes over around here again this is a pretty shallow little area you've also got another creek channel back in here too um, but definitely somewhere you want to go and check out springtime for sure uh, go and look and see if you can find anything up in that area as you get down in here you get in more of the clear water a little bit deeper water uh, you may have a little bit more success but never mark out the shallow stuff because those bass will surprise you they'll get in some pretty shallow stuff all right, so let's keep moving down. Got a pretty good little lay down right here off of this point. So it's right outside of where that ramp was at Clear Springs Park. There's a lay down right off of that point. And I can see that being a really good spot to go check out. That point sets up good. I really like it. Back in here, you got a little old pond dam um, that, I, that I marked. Now that's really gonna depend on how high the water is. If the water can get up high enough and fill up that pond, you might have a pretty good little ledge there right where that pond dam is. Now, as I zoom back, let me zoom back and show you where I'm at. We're going to come up, come down here and come across this side. Uh, again, another good lay down right here off the edge of this point. It's a pretty shallow point. You can tell by the where the mud's kind of getting stirred up here. But right in here, some pretty good lay downs. Again, a lot of this stuff's going to depend on if we can get the lake up high enough. And lately for, uh, for our area, it has been tough to get some water. So again, right in here off the point, some lay downs. There is some rock here, believe it or not. It appears that there is rock right there. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe that's not rock. Maybe that's something else. But it looks like some scattered rock or something. So go look at that. If it is, that's going to be a money spot. It's right there off of a main lake point. There's not a lot of rock in this area. So if that is rock, that is going to be a great place to go look. So then again, we're moving down here off some of these points. Didn't find too much off the points, but again, some, some decent stuff. We got some laydowns, some laydowns in here, just some random laydowns going on throughout those points. When we look back into this little pocket here, was actually able to see a little bit of the channel, so I marked it for you guys. You can see that one. And then moving on down past all these points. Didn't see a lot around these little islands or anything like that. Nothing that really, you know, really got my attention big time. We do have some pretty good channels back in here that you could get back in and fish, especially in the fall and the spring. There's a lay down that's right here. And if you look really closely off here to this left side, let me show you this right here. Now, I don't know how deep this gets. If, if it gets deep enough, you've got a really good pinch point right here. And you guys may have heard me talk about that in previous videos, but anywhere where you can find where you can funnel the water in and get a really, really tight area to where the bass can basically ambush them from either side, those are going to be great little funnel areas, great places to try to find fish, really good high percentage areas to, uh, to locate them. All right, so moving through here, I didn't see a lot going on on the bank line, not a lot to share with you guys. But I did see over here that there is a roadbed. And if I move it in right here, it appears to be an old roadbed that could be going off in here. Now, obviously, the road kind of ends there and it gets all whacked out. Looks like it maybe could have been. A ramp at some time or someone may have used it as a ramp but it's got potential to be a complete roadbed um, and if it is then it probably went over and connected somewhere over in here and you may have a roadbed that goes all the way through it in fact while we're talking about that let's go ahead and draw this back and see how far back we can get i don't think we can get past 1956 is the only problem so i don't think we're going to get much here yeah we can't really see much i was hoping maybe we could see where that road um you know came through but i'm thinking this was a road at some point in time so you definitely want to look at that and see if you can figure see if you can find anything there all right let's move this back up to 2022 again not a lot that i can find right in here just a lot of shallow little spots things like that definitely a place you want to be very careful with your boat looks like there's a lot of timber a lot of places where you can get yourself in trouble now right up here we're at the red water fishing bridge have some really good riprap all around this bridge Again, high percentage area you definitely want to check out. And then over here, kind of a man-made, uh, not a concrete uh, boat ramp, but definitely a lot of rock and washout, all kinds of stuff right here that could collect those bass as well. So you'll want to look in that area just to see if you can find anything. This is just like the other area that we were up on the northern side. It looks like it gets pretty shallow over in here, um, but you do have a pretty good little creek channel. In fact, I might even see if I can modify this one. And just move oops that's not what we want to do so i'll have to do that later so what we could do is you can actually see the creek channel starts 
It actually goes up here. Let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can see this. Here's the creek channel. You can actually follow it here. It makes a pretty good turn right here. And then right here, it goes, zooms in here. Hopefully you can see my little hand. And then it goes here. We kind of lose it for a little bit right in here, but I guarantee it goes right here and it goes right through that bridge. So that bridge is going to be money because it's a main creek arm that's going right through the center of it. Uh, definitely good. And then you could come back in here and just follow that creek channel and see if you can see them setting up. Your, your high percentage areas are going to be these big turns where they touch stuff right here. Obviously underneath that, uh, that bridge is going to be a high percentage area as well. You got some more creek channels back here that I marked for you guys. And then now getting onto the southern end, just, just more rock, more riprap to be able to fish around. Some ditches back in here that you can see. Uh, this is very interesting. It almost looks like a little putting green. I don't know if that's a pond or what that is. Uh, but at some point in time, there's a ditch there. I don't see a ditch there anymore in, in 2022. So I'm actually going to delete that one because there must have been a ditch there at one point in time, and now there isn't. And this is kind of the same thing. There was one here at one point in time, and now there isn't anymore. So we're going to take those out. Don't want to waste your time looking for stuff that's actually not there. Now down in here, you've got a little bit of a ditch. I don't know if that's even worth fishing. I don't think I'd spend too much time there. I'd probably come out here and focus more on these points. So uh, a little bitty point right here, you know, not as obvious as that point would be, but this one's got some laydowns on it. You've also got some laydowns off the side of this point over here. Some more laydowns down here. A boat ramp that's been completely just washed out and all kinds of nastiness around it. So if the water's up, this is going to be a really good area to, to look in. And then over here as well, this is an old row bed. And you can see here that there's a lot of debris, a lot of rock and stuff like that. I would look to see if that goes further out into the lake. There could be some rock piles right out in here, stuff like that to go check out. So look at that. Let's see. That's not that road, is it, that we were looking at earlier? That could be, that might be where that road connects. So it could come down here and maybe turn possibly and connect to that. But pretty much we're seeing a road on each side. So I'm thinking there's a road bed that goes right through the middle of that. We'll probably be able to see it when we look at maybe Onyx, but that's just, I'm just guessing there. I have no idea if that's, uh, that's the case. All right, so let's keep moving down here. Off this point, there is a little bit of brush off this point you could look at. Again, right now, it's so shallow, you wouldn't be worth doing it right now. But if the lake gets up, definitely worth going back there and taking a look at. we got a pretty good little creek channel that's back here as well. We're in Big Creek Park. And then we're going to swing out here over the point. Now, before we do that, there's this area right here. And we talked about it earlier about funnel points. And if there's ever a funnel point... That's a great place to try to find fish. Well, this is another one of those funnel points. So some really good areas probably to set up on this, especially if you got a northern or a southern wind. So it's really pushing some current through there. I'm going to think you're, you want to set up on these, these outside edges, like right here where the entry areas are. These are going to be your primary areas right there, right off of that corner, right off of that corner. This point can even be a good spot to look at. So right in here is going to be a really good area. There's nothing for me to mark for you there, um, but you can see you've got a funnel system there that's going on that looks like it's got decent depth to it. That could be some really good spots to set up and find some fish right off these points. Think about it as if, you know, if, if you were waiting for somebody to run through this tunnel and you were going to jump out and scare them, where would you set up at? And all those points where you would set up out to jump out and scare them, that's the same place that the bass are going to set up in as well. So uh, just think of it that way when you're looking at those funnel spots. All right. So as we're moving over here, more Texas Park and Wildlife fish attractors. You got three of them out here. And then we've got more laydowns over here off the top of this little island. I guess it's not really an island, but the uh, where the arm really comes out, the main, the main arm of the lake comes out right here. So let's go ahead and end the video there. Let's not go any further. You can see here we're going to get into a bunch of laydowns and stuff like that, and we're about 20 minutes into this thing. So I'm going to come back on the next video. We'll start here at this laydown right here off the edge of this point. We'll work our way down the, uh, the southwestern side, and then we'll come down here and work on this south side as well. And we should finish up at the dam. It might take us a couple videos to go through this. Make sure to go out and check out our site, simplisticfishing.com. What we do is we take all of these waypoints, plus we take all the offshore waypoints that we talked about. We put all of those together onto a card for you. And then you basically just plug it into your card, import it in. And when you're out there fishing, you can actually see these waypoints 
on your graph. It will change the way you fish. I promise you that. It'll, it'll it allows you to really just break down the lake really quick. If you want to fish laydowns, you know exactly where to go. If you want to fish rocks, you know exactly where to go. Boat ramps, all that stuff. It just makes it so much easier to go out and effectively fish. So go check it out, simplisticfishing.com. And until next time, I hope you catch your PB. Take it easy.